Another season-ending Michigan game, another Big Ten title at stake, and this time it is winner-take-all once again. Alongside head coach Jim Tressel, I'm Jeff Hogan. Good to have you along with us with Buckeye Football Weekly. And, Coach, uh, this is exactly what it sounded like, and, you know, some of the critics and some of the media didn't say it would come down to these two teams, but once again, it does. Well, you know, we go into every year hoping that it'll come down to this because there's nothing like the Ohio State-Michigan game, and you add to it the opportunity to be Big Ten champions and, Go to the Rose Bowl or wherever, a uh, special day. Well, certainly uh, the wherever we hold out hope for. And in the meantime, we watch these highlights roll off from what was a nasty day in the big house, but a great day when you can parade out, parade out your captains along with Jim Lachey. And there's the honorary captain. Jim Lachey did a great job speaking to our guys, and he was excited to be there. And here you see Todd stepping up and, and uh, moving the ball forward. Uh, every yard is golden in this game, and uh, he did a good job stepping up there. And... Beanie did a good job lugging the mail all day long. Certainly he did, and this was the first drive of the game. And you made some good positive yardage and had some good things going here. Doesn't end up in points. M might have been able to get a call there as uh, your receiver gets run over in <laughs> Brian Hartline. Well, you know, it's, it, it's tough out there, and we didn't get it done, punted away. We got him stopped, and, and then we came back, and you see Todd finding Brian Rubisky, and it was a tough day to throw the ball for us and, and the Wolverines. Well, six yards complete on that, and then Beckman goes back and falls down. Mm -hmm. We talk about the conditions here. Weather uh, was a factor here. The weather was, and that field was slick, and that, because of the, the type of day it was, it was tough, and that was one of Hart's best runs. Uh, our guys did a great job bottling him up all day. Mike Hart, a pickup of 12 on the play, but Chad Henney drops back to pass here. And Vern Golston's in. Well, Vern Golston was in there all day long, and it didn't matter which side he was coming from. Uh, he was putting pressure on them, and uh, they got three out of it. But uh, our defense was holding tough. Well, you've been getting points on your first drives all season long, and then you're, you find yourself down here, three points on the road. So uh, after the KC Lapata 33-yard field goal, three nothing, and the Bucks back to work defensively. Yeah, we had to, we had to punt it away to them. They got the ball, but our defense. Kind of regained the tempo of the game coming around there on the sack. I think it might have been Dexter Larimore and, and uh, just good pressure all day long from our front. Yeah, Dex under the pile there, loss of five. So Bucks get the ball back. And this one complete to Ballard. A little boot route there, and Jake Ballard's a fine receiver. Here we come back and throw it in there. It was a heck of a first down catch by Brian Hartline. Got shook up a little bit on the play. Uh, then we got back in and hit an out route there to Dane Sonsenbacher, and, you know, we're starting to move the ball down the field. Well, certainly the third and four play you're talking about, Hartline took a big shot there, but picked up nine, got the first, and then you continue to move it through the air and on the ground. Beanie just powers his way. Good job by the guys up front. The guys were really coming off the ball and awful proud of the way they're going, and uh, Beanie a heck of a run right there, and, and uh, here we are down knocking at the door. Yeah, Beanie picks up 12 down to the five-yard line, and then second and goal from the one. Good job running over the safety. That's what you have to do when you're a running back. There's going to be one unblocked guy, and you have to run him over. Beanie did just that. We take the lead at 7-3, to three, and back with the ball is Michigan. But the defense kind of figures out that run. Yeah, Marcus Freeman, Doug Worthington, all the guys playing hard. Nader Abdallah, there goes Vernon Golston chasing them again, forcing them to throw the ball away. And, and I'm sure Henny's seeing uh, Golston in the sleep. Certainly back to pass again, and more pressure this time for the More Golston, and... Uh, Henny's on the ground again. That was a third and three place. So you stopped them once again. Third down conversions, three of 18 for Michigan during this game. Todd Beckman makes another completion. Completion, moving the chains here to Brian Robisky. Unfortunately, this one uh, we didn't. Uh, Todd shouldn't have thrown that one up. It was getting hit as he was going, and uh, we put our defense in bad stead there, but uh, they rose up and kept him out. And, Made it too long of a field goal attempt. That was a 48-yarder into a little bit of a breeze, and he didn't quite have the leg for it, and so we go in 7-3. Yeah, and Casey Lapata there, you saw the missed field goal. He had that one make 9 of 9. He was on the season since he took over the job. That was his first miss of the season. You say uh, that Todd Beckman shouldn't have thrown that. You find in the big games that guys try to make those plays? Well, sometimes you do, and I'm not sure his feet were under him. Then he got banged just a little bit, and... And, you know, maybe as we look back, maybe we shouldn't have put him in that situation. We were a long way from pay dirt with only a few seconds to go. And, but, you know, in that game, you want to strike it anytime you can. And, um, you know, we need to learn from it. Well, certainly. And uh, on the ground, Beanie Wells, 20 carries in the first half. Was that in the makeup of this game plan? Oh, no doubt about it. We felt like we needed to run the ball at him. Uh, 
it was that kind of day when you got out there, you saw the weather. It wasn't going to be a day where you could pass as efficiently as, as a nice day, and uh, we needed to be good up front and good with the ball in Beanie's hands. All right, we've got plenty more on this edition of Buckeye Football Weekly. Stay with the second half highlights a little later. We'll talk about some of our Buckeye profiles up next.